Hi, friends, and welcome to Midweek Connections. My name is Kayla. This is our worship pastor, Paul Escobedo. And we're privileged and honored that you are here tonight with us, ready to worship, be intentionally in the word of God with the preaching that's coming, the, the teaching that's coming after our worship time. We invite you to set aside your distractions, to um, put this volume on all the way up on blast so that you can enter into the presence of God boldly with us. And uh, would you just take a moment right now and let's pray together. God, we come before you in humility. We come before you in thanksgiving, Lord God, and we also come before you in need, Lord. I pray for all of the people that are watching tonight, whether it's Wednesday or any day after that, Lord. I pray, God, that you would meet them exactly where they are in their physical location, God, but also in their emotional state, Lord God, or in their spiritual state, Lord, that you would come and you would intervene, Lord, wherever they may be. And whatever needs that they're coming to you tonight with, Lord, I pray that you would fulfill those needs, that you would meet those needs, and that they would be reminded, Lord, this evening that you are their Jehovah Jireh, Lord God. You are their provider and their supplier of everything. And you are deserving of all the glory and all of the honor and all of our worship, God. And that's what we're here tonight to do, to be intentionally in your presence and intentionally in the word of God, growing together as a community, God. So I pray that you would bless this time, that you would have favor over us, and that you would um, take care of our friends, Lord God, who are at home watching tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Between us, by the cross, you came and brought them down. You broke them down, and there were chains around us. By your grace, we are no longer bound, no longer bound. You call me out of the grave, you call me into the
yes you did oh he made a way that's why we see your promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness i'm still in your hands this is my Well, praise the Lord, Valley Life Community Church. I like to say it's good to be with you once again on this midweek service. Praise God. Glad to be here with you this evening. My name is Brother Sonny Smith, and I get the opportunity this uh, evening to break the bread of life with you this, uh, this evening. So if you've got your Bibles tonight, I'm excited to be able to share the word of the Lord with you. And uh, also want to just put a real quick plug uh, this evening. If you're watching by Facebook, why don't you share it with your uh, friends and share it with others that are around. And if you're watching on YouTube, just uh, subscribe. That way you can get more and more connected about what's going on here at Valley Life Assembly of God. Praise God. Tonight, we're going to be on the subject of I Am the Door. And I just want to say our pastors have been doing such an awesome job, Pastor Powell, putting these Bible studies together for us. Amen. They've just been tremendous. Pastor Mike Garcia did such a wonderful job last week, and we're looking forward to hearing Brother Nadar. And all of the Bible teachers have been doing such an awesome job. My wife and I have been just thoroughly fed with the Word of God from these messages. Amen. So praise God. Tonight, I want to encourage you to grab your Bible. Amen. And we're going to go to the book of John chapter 10, and we're going to be reading verses 1 through 10 this evening, 1 through 9 this evening, excuse me. So if you have your Bibles, amen, praise God. This is a good time to get a pen and a piece of paper and jot down some notes because we've got some scriptures we're going to be looking at tonight, amen. So the word of the Lord says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door, amen, that's your key word, the door, into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep, to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Aren't you glad that Jesus knows your name? Amen. And verse 4, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Every time I read about that, I remember when I was a kid, and my mom would say, don't talk to strangers, amen? Praise God. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were, which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. 
I am the door. Amen. You ought to underline that in your Bible. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. Amen. And shall go in and out and find pasture. Praise God. What a beautiful passage of scripture. Amen. Before we start getting into our study, I would just like to take a little bit of time this evening. And I would like for you to gather with me to the, this evening. And let's come together in prayer. Amen. And ask God to bless the, the, the teaching of his word tonight. Amen. Praise God. Join with me this evening. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, your precious Holy Son of God, and through and by the power of the Holy Ghost, God, that you've given us this opportunity to break bread with each other, God. We're asking tonight, God, that the bread of life, Jesus Christ, would just come walking out of these pages right into our heart tonight. We're asking for the anointing. We're asking for a fresh touch of your spirit. And we're asking tonight that you would bless our hearts with your word tonight in Jesus mighty name can somebody give the Lord a clap offering and a shout hallelujah praise be to God amen so for my introduction this evening so what did Jesus mean when he said, I am the door? What a powerful, powerful statement that Jesus made, amen? What did he mean by that? This is a question that I want to answer for us tonight, if I can, by the help of the Holy Ghost, amen? But before I do, I believe that it's very important for us, amen, to take a little step in a little journey backwards, amen, to the book of Exodus, where we can find and discover where this this I am declaration of God first came from. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me real quickly to the book of Exodus chapter three, and we're going to be looking at verses 11 through 14. Exodus chapter three and verses 11 through 14. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Exodus chapter three, verses 11. This is where God appeareth to Moses, appears to Moses in a burning bush. Amen. God is having a dialogue, amen, with Moses. And God is calling Moses for a great work to do, to bring a deliverance for the children of Israel. And Moses, amen, is kind of intimidated. Moses is kind of insecure in some of these areas of his life, amen. And he's afraid and he doesn't know what to say. And so he says in verse 11, and Moses said unto God, who am I? Who am I, God, that I should go into Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? In verse 12, he said, God says, and, and he said, I certainly will be with thee, and this shall be a token or a sign unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, to, uh, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Listen to the words that God gave to him. Listen to the words. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. I want to say it again. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said unto, and he said, thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Amen. So there you have it. Amen. This is the first declaration coming from God almighty. Amen. That he is the great I am. Amen. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, made the same declarations numerous times. The I, the I am statements would have particular significance uh, to the first century Jewish listener because God had revealed himself, amen, to Moses with the resounding I am that we just read found in Exodus 3.14. Jesus also made this, uh, this claim very clearly in John chapter 8 and the Jews. Now this is interesting because the Jews, they understood what he was saying. They understood what he meant when he said, I am. 
He said in John chapter 8 and verse 24, I said, therefore, ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. So these are powerful claims that Jesus makes throughout the book of John. In John chapter 8, uh, they, uh, they, they wanted to take up stones to stone him because he being a man was claiming to be God. This in their eyes was blasphemy. Listen to the words found of Jesus found in John chapter 8, verses 56 through 59. Amen? I'm kind of laying a foundation here because we need to get to understand where this terminology, where this declaration came from, and why is Jesus using these same declarations, okay? So John chapter 8, and look at verse 56. Jesus is having a dialogue with the Jews. And they're having a hard time with some of the things he's saying. Verse 56, Jesus says to them, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Wait a minute. You're not even yet 50 years old, Jesus, and you've seen Abraham? Uh, this is getting kind of strange here. I don't know what you're talking about. But listen to the words of Jesus. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus made his proclamation and his declaration here, and he says, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Am. Hallelujah. What a revelation that God was getting ready to unfold from way back to Exodus 3 and 14. Now Jesus is stepping on the plate, the son of the living God, fully God and fully man. Hallelujah. And he's making the claim just like God did. Amen. In the fiery burning bush of fire up in the mountain with Moses. And he's saying, I am. Am. Before Abraham was, I am. Woo, that's shouting ground, church. I'm almost about ready to preach. Amen. But I'm supposed to be teaching the class tonight. Now look at the response. Verse 59. Then they took up stones to cast at him. Why were they going to cast stones at him? Because he, being a man, amen, was saying that he was the great I am. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Amen. All right, now that we're laying the foundation, let's move on just a little bit clearer here, a little bit more forward. In the book of John, we find a sevenfold declaration of Jesus Christ claiming to be the great I am. Now, some of our Bible teachers have already touched on the bread of life. Amen. Some of them have already touched upon the light of the world. And tonight I'm going to be sharing about Jesus being the door. Amen. Praise God. And so tonight, let's just go through a few of these. Let's just go through these seven real quickly. Number one, if you're writing these down, Jesus said in John chapter 6 and verse 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Amen. As the bread of life sustains physical life, so Christ Jesus offers us and sustains us with spiritual life. Amen. Remember the word of God says, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of almighty God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two, uh, Jesus said in John chapter eight and verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world, amen? To a world lost in darkness, Christ offers himself as a guide, amen? Number three, John uh, chapter 10 and verses seven and nine, this is where we're gonna camp out here, amen? Jesus says, I am the door, amen? I am the door, hallelujah, amen? What is he saying? Jesus protects his followers as shepherds, amen? Protects their flock from predators, amen? Number four, in John chapter 10 and verse 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Jesus, amen, is committed, to, is committed to caring and watching over those that are his. Number five, uh, Jesus says in, uh, in John chapter 11, verse 25, he says to Martha, Martha saying, Lord, if thou would have been here, you could have raised my brother up. And Jesus turns and looks to her and says, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. And so with that being said, death is not final, is not the final word for those that are in Christ. Number six, 
John chapter 14 and 6, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And so Jesus is the source of all truth and knowledge about God. Amen. Uh, number seven, uh, John chapter 15, verse one, Jesus says, I am the true vine. And by keeping ourselves connected to Christ as the vine, we can bear much fruit for without him, we can do nothing. That is powerful. The seven declarations of Christ saying that he is the I am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So now back to our question. Why did Jesus say I'm the door? I believe tonight, church, that Jesus said these words because he was declaring to the world that he is exclusively the only way to heaven. Amen. He is exclusively the only door that can get you to heaven. Jesus said all that came before me, they were thieves and they were robbers. Amen. Praise God. In this context, uh, Jesus is telling us that he is the shepherd of the sheep, but also the door of the sheep. Amen. In doing so, he is vividly contrasting himself with that of the religious leaders of his time, in whom he described as thieves and robbers. This is powerful. When I was reading, when I was putting this study together, and I was thinking about that immediately, I, be, I begin to think about Matthew chapter 23. When you read Matthew chapter 23, Matthew chapter 23 is a rebuke, amen, to all of the Pharisees, the religious people of the day, amen? Amen, because they were putting the religious commandments and the traditions above, the traditions above God's word, and they were putting more burdens upon the people, amen. Thank God where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, amen. Praise God. Thank God there's freedom that we have in Christ Jesus, amen. In Matthew's gospel, chapter 23, he rebuked the Pharisees and the scribes who were the religious leaders of the day. Listen to some of the words of Christ's rebuke that are found in uh, Matthew chapter 23 and verse 13. This is what it says, Matthew 23, 13. He says, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering in to go in. In other words, Jesus is saying these thieves and robbers, they were blocking the way for others to go into the kingdom of God. And let me say this, that is a very dangerous position to be in. So when Jesus says, I am the door, he is reiterating the fact that through him is and through him and him only is salvation, amen, made possible. Now, the, this idea of Jesus being the only way with the uh, ecumenical movement of this world and the culture of our day, it's not very popular because the world wants to believe that all rivers go to the ocean. The world wants to believe that all religions can get you to heaven, amen? But Jesus said it very clearly. There's only one door into the sheep pen. There's only one door to come in and there's only one door to go out. And he's saying, I am the door, amen? He's saying, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, hallelujah. And so uh, Jesus is uh, telling us here that he's the only way. And with the, uh, the popular teachings in our culture today in the ecumenical religious circles, it's not very popular to, to say that Jesus is the only way. They want to believe that there are many ways to heaven. And if you practice your religion with sincerity, you will be accepted. But listen to the words that are found in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. The word of God says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Amen. Praise God. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Let me just say this. Buddha is not the way. Amen. Muhammad is not the way. Hare Krishna and all the other religions of the world, they're not the way. There's only one that you can go to the tomb and you can find it empty today, and that is our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the only, exclusively only way 
way to heaven. Amen. Praise God. That's shouting ground for a believer in Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So Jesus and the apostles made it very clear in the New Testament that the only way to heaven must be through Christ, the Son of God. Jesus himself, John chapter 3, one of the most beloved scriptures that we find in the Bible. John chapter 3 and verse 16. Listen to the words of Jesus. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. Amen. That's why we go into all the world and we preach the gospel. Amen. That God can save and sanctify and fill with the Holy Ghost and bring a lost and dying world to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because He is the only begotten Son of God and He is the only door to heaven. Amen. And so let me give you some scriptures on Christ being the only way. Amen this evening. Praise God. So if you've got your tablet, you're writing down some scriptures. I want you to look up, uh, write this down. John chapter 14 and verse 6. John chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus said exclusively, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. We read in the scripture in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, chapter 5 and verse 19. It says, To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Amen. Hallelujah. The only way to get to heaven. Amen. I remember hearing this message one time that the way to heaven is through a little door. Amen. And the only way that you can get into heaven is that at the bottom of the cross, there's a little bitty door. And the only way you can get in is you've got to get down on your knees. Amen. And you've got to pray and repent and go through that little baby door. Amen. There's only one door to heaven and it's through Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Another scripture. Let me give it to you. Amen. Now, remember the story. When Peter and John were going uh, to the temple to pray, to the hour of uh, prayer, amen, the Bible says that there was a certain man that had been laid there, amen, from his youth. And I think he was a man that was above 40 years of age. And the Bible says that this man looked at Peter and John expecting to receive something, but Peter looked at him and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I give, I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. He lifted him up. The man began to leap. And the Bible says he was in the temple leaping and praising God. Now, fast forward, the religious people of the day were very upset of what happened. And so they took Peter and and John, they apprehended them and they begin to command them not to preach in this name anymore. Amen. But Peter says to them in Acts chapter four and verse 12, if you're writing scriptures down, Jesus said, uh, Peter said, neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You must be saved to get to heaven. You've got to be born again, hallelujah, to get to heaven. You've got to be washed in the blood to get to heaven. Amen. There is only one sacrifice, uh, amen, that can atone for your sins. There's only one blood sacrifice that can redeem you, that can wash you, that can cleanse you, and that can sanctify you and get you prepared for heaven. And that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Amen. So there's no other name. There's no other way. Now look at Paul. Paul says this in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 18. He says, for through him, that's Christ, we both have access by one spirit. Amen. That's the Holy Ghost unto the Father. I'm going to read that again. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 18. He says, for through him, that is Christ Jesus, we both have access, talking about the Jew and the Gentile, amen, by one spirit, that's the Holy Ghost. The Bible says by one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. There's only one body, amen, that's going to heaven, and that is the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. So through him, that's Christ, we both have access by one spirit, unto the Father. Amen. Glory to God. What an encouraging word that we find in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 18. 
Also, Paul says in 1 Timothy, because we're talking about scriptures that are exclusively teaching that Jesus is the only way. Amen? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. This is the words of Paul to young Timothy, the preacher. Amen? He says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, hallelujah, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Amen, church. So there you have it, amen. We've learned about the, the, the originality of the declaration of where this great I am statement came from. We find in the New Testament that Jesus is not shy, amen, to claim, amen, the same declarations, the sevenfold declarations of Christ Jesus being the I am, amen. Praise God. Now, Amen. I just want to take you back a little bit back into memory once again. You remember the, the, the ark when God commanded uh, Noah to build the ark because the earth was filled with violence. The earth was filled with uh, 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 just hatred and there was evil and it was a wicked world. Amen. And God instructed Noah to build the ark. Amen. This wood structure stands seven stories high. And the length of it was one and a half football fields. Although this ark was so massive, there was still only one door to get into that ark. Amen. This is where all the animals came in. This is where all the birds came in. This is where every living creature came in. Amen. There were some that were two by two. There were some that came in by seven. Amen. But for mankind, there was Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their four wives. There was only eight souls that made it in because there was only eight that had faith in God to believe that once they got in that ark, they were going to be saved. Church, there's still only one door. And if you want to get saved, there's still only one way. Amen. And it's only through the blood of Jesus. It's not by your good works. Uh, it's not by anything you have achieved. It's not by your merits or anything. The Bible says for by grace, we have been saved through faith. Amen. So it is today, my friends, we're living in a wicked and violent and corrupt world. And the only way out is through the door called Jesus Christ. In closing this evening, amen, I want to share a scripture with you, one more scripture. Revelations chapter 3 and verse 20, one of the most beautiful scriptures in, in all the book of the, in all of the Holy Bible, all 66 books. Jesus says this word, these words, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he, and he with me. God is here tonight. God is right there in your living room tonight, church. And God wants to come into your heart. I don't know if you're carrying a burden. I don't know if you're carrying a struggle. I don't know if you're going through something. But if you're here tonight and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to lead you in a prayer real quickly. Amen. Praise God. Everybody pray and let's pray this prayer together. Amen. Praise God. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, thanking you for the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. We're asking tonight, God, that you'd open the door of our heart and come into our lives and forgive us of all of our sins, God. We thank you for this lesson that we went through tonight, God. Let it, let it, be a, let it take root in our hearts and help us to grow in the things of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, church, Jesus is the great I am. And he said, I am the door. Amen. Praise God. God bless you tonight. It was a pleasure being with you. I hope you have a great evening and the rest of the week. Don't forget Sunday morning, we're going to have church 10 a.m. God bless you.